to end of week news with Ainsley. It's Friday the 31st of July. It's the end of the month as well. Pretty big news today. Macquarie predicting 15 to 30% property crash. Property crash is predicted. You can sense the growing realization in Australia that a V-shaped recovery is simply not on the cards. As many people started to believe when everything was awesome again after that initial lockdown. Our packed waiting room at Ainsley every day is a good anecdotal indicator. The second wave is upon us, with Victoria getting worse, not better, and a feeling of inevitability that it will spread with the sort of selfish stupidity we saw with those young girls sneaking into Queensland this week. Last week, we saw a record fall in GDP for the US of 32.9%. That is a massive fall there. Again, we keep using the word unprecedented when looking at the economic impacts of COVID-19. And this next chart we're going to show from Bloomberg illustrates just how unprecedentedly bad this is in a historical context. This goes all the way back, this next chart, to 1950. Now, there's been some pretty big depressions, recessions along the way there, but just notice what's happened in 2020. We've never seen anything like that before. On the same night of this print, we also saw a second straight week of initial jobless claims getting worse, another 1.43 million Americans filing for the doll and taking the ongoing total to 17 million. To make matters worse, there is no sign of an imminent agreement to extend the government relief package for businesses and individuals alike, as the Republicans and Democrats can't agree. Let's just look at that 17 million again. That's just a bit over half of Australia's population unemployed by comparison. In America, that is a lot of people. At home, the AFR ran a story yesterday on Macquarie Bank's dive view of the Australian economy and their inability to give any sort of guidance amid such uncertainty, leading with, Macquarie Group has warned current levels of government support may have likely masked higher unemployment and a deeper economic slump, and says it is unable to provide earnings guidance for the first time since the 2008 global financial crisis. What guidance that did give us might be for cause for considerable concern, particularly for property investors. Chief Financial Officer Alex Harvey said the company's base case, with a likelihood of slightly more than 50%, was for a 9% fall in GDP by mid-year, sparking a surge in unemployment to 9% and a 15% slide in house prices. There was slightly less chance, or even less optimistic scenario, a jobless rate of 11% and a 30% crash in the property market occurring. Mr. Harvey said the company wasn't betting on an economic snapback. I'm not saying it's 0% chance. It's unlikely, he said. The company said it was unable to provide meaningful guidance for its earnings over the coming year. Reinforcing this concern was the release yesterday of the latest ABS figures for dwelling approvals for June, which saw a fourth consecutive month of declines, the longest running decline since the GFC. After the 15.8% drop in May, June saw another 4.9%. ANZ economist Adelaide Timbrell doesn't see this improving anytime soon either. Adelaide said, slow population growth, elevated unemployment and raising vacancy rates are all slowing demand for new housing. We expect more declines in approvals in the months ahead. Aussies have long had property as their go-to hard asset of choice. Bricks and mortar is in our blood. However, as we discussed most recently, the fundamentals are looking decidedly worrisome. With shares elevated despite these economic conditions, property looking at losses ahead and no return on cash in the bank. It's no wonder gold and silver are becoming the asset choice for so many in Australia right now. Wow, that's news for today. We hope you've had a good week in gold and silver. Even with that volatility, we're still up with all-time highs for gold. Enjoy your weekend and we'll catch you on Monday.